continuing with parallel operations of alternators in this particular session we will see the one method of synchronizing the, the alternator and also load sharing between the, the alternators we know that the condition for a parallel operation that is the first one is the terminal voltage of the incoming alternator is same as that of the existing alternator and the frequency of the incoming alternator is equal to the existing alternator and the phase sequence of the voltage of the incoming alternator is equal to the existing alternator by bus bar and the fourth one is the phase of the incoming alternator voltage must be identical with phase of the bus bar voltage look into all these uh, four conditions then how you are connecting the alternator in path that we have to see now synchronization that is one of the method just I am discussing here as a three dark lamp method I have got a bus bar here then I have got R Y B phases line then I have got alternator 1 it is an existing alternator which is already connected to the bus bar with the R Y B as a as a sequence and I want to connect this particular alternator in pair with this existing alternator to the bus bar. The first thing what I want is just you should not connect directly to the this bus bar then through switch what I am doing here is I am connecting the the three lamps across each face that is between the alternator and the bus bar that is between the switch ok that is our first lamp the second lamp and the, the third lamp in all the three phases then one by one you have to fulfill the condition the first one is the voltage of the incoming machine must be same as the bus bar voltage then for testing that what you have to do is you have to connect one volt between then we are missing the voltage between the, the bus bar we know the what is the bus bar voltage then using this voltmeter you have to adjust the field of the alternator such that the generated voltage P must be equal to the, the bus bar voltage that is the first condition the second condition we have to fulfill is the, the frequency the frequency of the generated voltage is same as the frequency of the bus bar frequency that also you have to test the third one is the important thing is the phase sequence the phase sequence the phase sequence of the incoming machine must be same as the phase sequence of the, the existing the bus bar of, of phase sequence of. so that how to judge that one what you have to do is just you have to build up the small voltage then you can see the there is a flickering of these bulbs then all the bulbs are flickering or going dark and bright simultaneously continuously at a time then you come to conclusion that the incoming machine has got a phase, same phase sequence as this one instead of that suppose bulbs are goes to dark and the bright sequentially one by one after the other one by other. suppose it is blinking next this one next this one means there is cyclic blink or going into dark and bright in the sequential manner in that case you come to conclusion that the phase sequence of the incoming machine is not the, the same in that case what you have to do is you have to interchange the any two phase sequence and once again you can see the, the flickering of the bulbs if the flickering of the bulbs is they are going into dark and bright at a time then you come to the conclusion that the phase sequence of the incoming machine is same as the bus bar the phase sequence then the first thing is you have to adjust the field so that the voltage should be the same as the bus bar voltage second one you have checked the, the phase sequence they have to go into dark and bright continuously that is your adjustment that is you can check if you are blinking at a time then you come to conclude that it is the phase sequence is same as the, the bus bar phase sequence next the third thing is that the frequency the frequency 
then how to judge the the frequency of the generated voltage is m as bus bar voltage frequency in that case these lamps are going into dark and bright the continuous they are flickering they are flickering then the rate of the frequency that is the rate of flickering is very high in that case there is a large difference between the the frequency of the generated voltage as well as the frequency of the the bus bar then how to match the incoming frequency incoming generated voltage frequency with the bus bar in that case what you have to do is the frequency is depending upon the speed of the the alternator so that what you have to do is with the prime mover of the alternator 2 you have to adjust the speed of the the alternator 2 such that the rate of the flickering is as slow as possible as slow as possible in that case the difference between the frequency of the the generated voltage and the the bus bar frequency is somewhat their match that is you have to adjust the speed such that rate of flickering should be as minimum as a possible then the, the fourth one what we are looking for is the phase of incoming machine must be same as the bus bar the phase how to judge that that is the phase of the bus bar and the phase of the generated voltage if they are equal and opposite in that case the voltage across the bulb is zero in that case the bulb will not flow therefore whenever you are absorb this lamp so that when it is goes to the dark current in that case you have to close the switch this switch is called as synchronization switch okay then we can close the switch so that this alternator is connected in parallel with the bus bar the simple the pressure is that adjust the voltage by the excitation check the phase sequence by the whether it is sequentially flickering or at a time so that it should be go into bright and dark at a time so that the phase sequence should be same then for matching the frequency that is the rate of flickering you have to judge then by adjusting the speed of the the prime mover of the alternator 2 then you can bring the frequency of the the generated voltage nearer to the the bus bar frequency uh, frequency of the bus bar voltage then at the time of a dark period of this light so that the phase are exactly opposite to each other so that the voltage is zero across the voltage in that case it goes into dark at that instant of time go to close the this synchronizing switch so that this alternator is connected in parallel with the, the, the other alternator already is uh, delivering the load this is how we have to connect the, the alternator in parallel in the three dark lamp method because when it is goes to dark in that case you are closing the switch that is why it is called as three dark lamp method then we will see the how the load is sharing between the, the two alternators here I am taking a simple diagram I am taking a bus bar I mean per phase basis I am analyzing here so that I am taking only the two lines and um, I am representing the alternator with a circle with a sinusoid waveform here which is alternator 1 and this alternator 2 they are connected in parallel therefore then there is a load is connected across of this uh, bus bar that is it is a delivery of the load here now I have a load is connected across the, the bus bar here okay the two alternators they are delivering the, the current so that it is meeting the, the demand in the form of a load now the voltage of the bus bar is V or the terminal voltage of the across the load is V means the terminal voltage of generator 1 and the generator 2 is also V however the generated voltage of the alternator 1 is E1 generated voltage of alternator 2 is E2 however their terminal voltage is remain same that is V is the terminal voltage of the alternator 1 V is also the terminal voltage of alternator 2 also V is the voltage across the, the load also now then the alternators 
are represented by a source of voltage and its the impedance in the form of RA and XS. Therefore, that I am representing as Z1 and Z2. Z1 is the synchronous impedance of the alternator 1. Z2 is synchronous impedance of the alternator 2. Then how to get the 10 volt voltage V? V is nothing but E1. That is the current delivered by the first alternator is I1. The current delivered by the second is I2. Then the current I1 is delivering at the same time I2 is also is delivering. Therefore, the total current in the load is I1 plus I2 which is flowing through the, the load and the voltage across the terminals of the load is also the, the V. Now, how to find out the value of V? The V is nothing but that is E1 minus I1 Z1. Also, the terminal voltage V is equal to E2 minus I2 Z. In other words, E1 is equal to V plus I1 Z1 and E2 is equal to V plus I2 Z. It's one and the same. The same thing I am writing here. That is, I am E1 E2 of the generated voltage, Z1 Z2 are the synchronous impedance of the 1 and 2. The terminal voltage V of the alternator 1. V, that is, it is voltage across at these two points is V. It is same as the bus bar voltage. V is equal to E1 minus drop in this, that is I1 Z1. Similarly, for the machine 2, that is, V is equal to, V here is E2 minus I2 Z. Also, we know that the total current which is flowing through the load is I, that is equal to I is equal to I1 plus I2. At the same time, if you are applying the, the same principle, the terminal voltage V is equal to I into Z, because its impedance, load impedance is Z, therefore V is equal to I into Z. Therefore, V is, therefore V is equal to I into Z, where I is I1 plus I2, where I is I1 plus I2. Okay. With this, just we'll derive the equation for the load saving between alternator one and two. That is, V is the terminal voltage, E1 and E2 are the generator voltage, Z1 and Z2 are the synchronous impedance of generator one and two. And the terminal voltage of the machine 1, we already calculated E1 minus I1 Z1. Similarly, the V is equal to E2 I2 Z, E2 minus I2 Z2. Also, we know that across the load, V is equal to I Z. All these things you are already in the previous slide, just you are discussed. The voltage across the terminal, sorry, load is V, and the current flowing through the load is I, the load impedance is Z. Therefore, from this equation, I can calculate what is the total current I. The total current I is equal to, it is V by Z. Then also I know that I is equal to I1 plus I2. Then, from this first equation, just I am calculating what is the value of I1. I1 is equal to, it is V1, E1. I, I1 Z1 I am transferring to the left hand side, V I am transferring to the right hand side. What I am getting is, it is E1 minus V that is equal to I1 Z1. Therefore, I1 is equal to E1 minus V by Z1. From this equation, just from transfer to this side, V can transfer this. Then from that, we can find out I1. Similarly, you can find out what is the value of I2. I2 is equal to E2 minus V divided by Z from this equation. Then also we know that if we are adding these two currents, that is I1 plus I2. What is I1 plus I2? I1 plus I2 is nothing but I. That is just I am adding E1 minus V by Z1 plus E2 minus V by Z. Then also I know that I is equal to V by Z. Just I am replacing this I by V by Z. Therefore V by Z, this I am keeping as it is. I is V by Z. Then, from this, I am calculating the what is the terminal voltage V, that is the parameters having the coefficient of V I am bringing to the left hand side, the rest of I am transferring to the right hand side. One is V by Z, 
the another one is minus v by z1 here that is we are transferring it is v by z1 we are getting here in the positive in the sec in another term i have got minus v by z2 that also i am bringing to the left hand side it will become v by z therefore v by z1 v by z2 plus v by z it is already v by z is already there here means v by z1 v by z2 v by z then v is a common therefore i am making outside here therefore what is the left out in, inside the bracket is 1 by z1 plus 1 by z2 plus 1 by z and the right hand side it is a left out with e1 z1 plus e2 z2 e1 z1 plus e2 z2 therefore i am calculating the value of v i am calculating the value of e e is equal to e1 by z z1 plus e2 by z2 divided by 1 by z1 plus 1 by z2 plus 1 by z this is the value of the v once we know the value of v if you know the generated voltage of generator 1 and 2 you can calculate what is the current shared by the, the transformer uh, sorry alternator 1 and alternator 2 that is i1 and i2 are the load current shared by the alternator 1 and 2 if you want apparent power that is v into i is the apparent power delivered by the alternator 1 v into i2 the apparent power delivered by the alternator 2 if you want the active power you take take the the real part of the apparent power so that we get the power delivered by the alternator 1 and power delivered to the load by the alternator 2 then we will look into the one of the numerical one this parallel operation It is given everything the two star connected single generators connected in parallel with the have emf of 1200 means e e value is given per phase and impedance that is the load impedance is given z1 and z2 is given determine the common terminal voltage as you to calculate the value of v line current power outputs when two machines internal em have the phase divergence of 5 degree that is e1 and e2 value is given 1200 then the phase displacement between e1 and e2 what is given is 5 z1 z2 as well as z is given ask to find out v the power delivered by the shared by the alternator 1 and alternator 2 just you have to make use of the e1 is 1200 e2 is also 1200 at an angle of 5 degree because he is given 5 degree divergence therefore i am taking these two values then z1 z2 and z value is already given just i have done then using this formula v is equal to e1 by z1 plus e2 by z2 divided by 1 by z1 plus 1 by z2 plus 1 by z just i am substituting the values all these values and using the calculator i am calculating the voltage v what i am getting is 925.12 and angle of my minus 19.260 Uh, 2.263 degree volt per phase. Then you have to find out what is I1. That is E1 by V by Z1. Just you have to substitute the value once again. Then you are getting the current I1. Then similarly you have to find out I2. That is E2 minus V divided by Z2. Therefore I am getting the current I2 as 173.35 with minus 35.351. Amperes. You are getting the the load shared by the alternator one and two in the form of current. Suppose if you want a power, then power output of the alternator one as V into I one. Whatever the value of the V, you can substitute here. You can put the value of the I one. You are getting it is a volt ampere apparent power. If you want, it is a active power. You have to multiply V I one cos phi. Then you are getting 562.3 kilowatt and the power output of the alternator once again you have to multiply v into i2 so you have to just substitute the value of v into i2 then you are getting the apparent power here then if you want a real power then it is v i2 cos phi 2 that what we are getting is 464.5 kilowatt this so you have to solve the, the problem sum the alternator that is a load sharing between the, the two alternators